Well, thank you for having me today. What a great uh, turnout. Uh, this is uh, a real honor for me to be part of this event. And uh, I do hope it's the first of many events that we can do together. Uh, I've been honored to have some discussions uh, with members of the Tibetan community thus far. It's been incredibly uh, eye-opening. And um, there are members of our select committee that wanted to be here today. Uh, it's a fly out day, however, so a lot of them have to get on an airplane and fly home, but they wanted me to send their regards. And so we're hoping to do bipartisan events going forward. And I wanna emphasize what a bipartisan experience this has been thus far on the select committee. Obviously today uh, is a very important day. Uh, in February of 1959, Chairman Mao Zedong spied trouble on the horizon in Tibet. And instead of fretting about the loss of life, Mao salivated, he quote, the more chaotic the situation in Tibet becomes, the better, for it will help train our troops and toughen the masses. Furthermore, the chaos will provide a sufficient reason to crush the rebellion and carry out reforms in the future." Unquote. A month later, on this day, 64 years ago, Mao got his bloody wish. Peaceful demonstrators surrounded the Dalai Lama's residence, protecting the young teenager until he was able to flee. And you all know what happened next. The People's Liberation Army shelled them with heavy artillery, along with the most important monasteries in Lhasa, striking at the soul of the Tibetan people. Ultimately, thousands of Tibetans were killed, which was just the beginning of the brutal repression of Tibet. Obviously, I don't need to tell anyone here this story, but it's important that we keep saying it. It's important that we educate my colleagues in Congress as to what happen again and again. And I'll come back to why. We're here today to remember the bravery that Tibetans demonstrated back in March of 1959. Courage in protecting their spiritual leader, in fighting for their freedoms, their identity, their culture, and their history. But today is not just about the past. Today is also about the present because that same group that attacked the Tibetans 64 years ago is still in power today. And they've not changed one bit. The CCP is still a threat, still duplicitous, still power hungry, still bloodthirsty. And where they trained their artillery on Tibet in 1959, today they train their weapons on the monasteries, on Lhasa, on Tibet, in people's minds. The nice word for this is cynicization. It's a fancy term. But the real term, according to the Dalai Lama himself, is cultural genocide. One million Tibetan children separated from their parents, sent to colonial boarding schools where their culture is forbidden, forced to speak only Chinese, to leave their religion and customs behind. The CCP is interfering with, in the reincarnation of the Dalai Lama, disrupting monastic education and wresting complete control of Tibetan Buddhism into party hands. The party knows what they're doing is reprehensible. That's why foreign journalists are banned, foreign visitors are kept to a trickle, and speech is so heavily policed that many are afraid to speak with family members that are outside China. Last week, for example, Radio Free Asia reported that a Tibetan woman was arrested simply for sending a text message to somebody outside of Tibet. The CCP is turning Tibet into an open air prison, just like they did in Xinjiang. Why? Because they think that if they can cut Tibet off from the world for long enough and cynicize the population, then the world will forget about Tibet. That's why we need to keep repeating what happened. That's what today is all about. So on behalf of the United States Congress, our message to the Chinese Communist Party is this. We will not forget. You can destroy buildings. You can jail innocents. You can separate children from their parents. You can surveil, harass, torture, and even kill but you will not succeed in your cultural genocide. We know who these people are. And I see so much courage in front of me here today. I see people who know the true brutal face of the CCP and are still willing to risk standing up and speaking out. 
Just know that when you do, you stand up not just for Tibet. You're also standing up for the Uyghurs. You're also standing up for Mongolians. You're standing up for the Hong Kongers. You're standing up for the Taiwanese. You stand up for every person who is subjected to the vicious control and intimidation and bullying of the Chinese Communist Party. You stand up for all of us, every person who believes in freedom, in self-determination, and in human rights. And because of your bravery, and look at the bravery among the younger generation here, because of that bravery, the world is finally waking up to the CCP's threat. Together, we will push back. Together, we will work to end this cultural genocide. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for inspiring me. And on behalf of the Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party, I very much look forward to working with you going forward. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you.